So I'll try to keep this one short, um, but I'm just looking at the question the way I actually put it here for, for the description. It's already quite long. Uh, so there's two different components to this. So there's a leasing component that says, look, there's a tenant on the property. He's a friend of my husband and he's leasing the property and he's doing something that her as a owner, right, doesn't like. Now, I, the reason I found this interesting was so many things could be put into this gap uh, that then feed the second question. So in this particular, in, in, this, in these particular circumstances, um, he's growing marijuana in the garage, right? Now, there's a question on whether uh, the legality behind it, whether it's above certain limits, below certain limits. We don't have all that is, uh, this information. So obviously, if there's illegal conduct, you, you should be able to cancel lease agreements, but certain lease agreements, the leases should provide for it. But if you're using the property for illegal conduct, uh, running an illegal business from the property, uh, um, you know, our, my argument is you, you can cancel the lease on that basis. However, uh, if you're not, and for example, this is within the personal use range, you probably wouldn't have much of a foot to stand on unless he's causing potential damage to the property, depending on how he's actually growing this thing in a garage, right? But so, but putting that aside, because that's very technical on what is allowed from that standpoint or not. What was particularly interesting here is there's clearly a situation where the wife doesn't want this tenant in the property. So it could be maybe the tenant isn't paying rent or the tenant's rent that he's paying because the tenant is the husband's friend, right? So it's her and the husband, husband's friend staying on the property. So there's an issue. She wants this tenant out. Her and her husband are getting divorced. So you can already start seeing where this uh, starts piecing together, right? She wants a tenant out. Maybe he's doing something wrong on the property. Maybe the rent isn't market related, whatever the case is. It, it leads to the second question of structuring, which I find so important. Um, and I always love speaking about structuring because I always go, oh yeah, but it's about asset protection. It's about tax efficiency. There's a whole bunch of little nifty tricks I can help you guys out with. And sometimes people overlook the reality of, but what happens if we divorce? Because it's easy to come see me and say, give me a trust, Bruno. My wife and I are going to be trustees and we're going to stick uh, that our child is a beneficiary. We're also going to be beneficiaries and let's make this trust work for our beneficiaries. But then we go, what about divorces? What happens there? Is the trust geared for something like that? Another mistake people sometimes make is they do the trust because they feel they can get some efficiency out of it, but the property actually belonged to them. And sometimes they came into the marriage with an existing property that now they put into the trust. And upon divorce, they go, wait, 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 um, I want my property back. It's, like, it's not yours anymore. Now you've given it to the trust. So I'm sorry you can't actually take it back. So the structuring component is very important because in this particular instance, the property owns by, owned by a company. The, uh, the, the husband's the director of the company. The trust is a shareholder of the company and both her and her husband are trustees. So you've got basically the husband and wife control the trust. The trust controls the company, but the director of the company runs the company that now allows this guy to stay on the property. Um, and the question here was, how does she get the guy out, right? And before we could even get to the question, that's why I said, it doesn't matter what you fill in that little X factor. Uh, what's that factor? It doesn't matter. It could be illegal uh, growing of marijuana. It could be failure to pay rent. It could be a, a, a non-market related rent. It could be anything, right? The reality behind it is how do you actually now, as this trustee, force this tenant to get out? So many layers in between, right? And that is one of the problems and people need to be mindful of it. If you're going to structure, you need to think of all circumstances. If you've got a property in a company and you're giving the, the, the running of the company to somebody else, you as a trustee will now need to follow every, every step to try and get this rectified. So for starters, in a case like this, you would probably need to call a trustees meeting, get your independent trustee involved uh, in the capacity as shareholders of the company. 
shareholders of the company now, the, the trust has to have a meeting to determine what the shareholder will do because they feel the company, uh, something's wrong in the company. So now, fortunately, you might be able to, if your trustee is drafted correctly, you might be able to get like a majority vote over, over the husband. But not all trusts work like that because some decisions are unanimous. So now that's really your first obstacle is how do you control a company that's run by the husband if the trust needs a unanimous decision before doing anything? So that's problem number one. Let's assume it's majority. Now, this independent trustee is going to need to get the husband to a meeting. And if he refuses, you can remove him as trustee because he's not acting in the interest of the trust. Now you create a decision for the shareholders on firing the director of the company and appointing a new director. So now you're already at that stage. So shareholders make a decision, fire the director of company. The trust has made that decision, appoint a new one. Could be the wife, could be the independent trustee. And only at that point can you make a decision on the lease. So structuring is great, but if you're doing it the wrong way and you're going to this cookie, a cookie cutter, structuring people that just put these structures in place and you know you, be on your way, be very careful because something goes wrong with that structure. If something goes wrong with something personal outside of the structure, beneficiary complaints, you're getting divorced. It's it's a pure battle, um, and yeah, then then you're gonna unfortunately pay for your mistakes. But yeah, so that's the case that that we have at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll keep you guys up up to date. Great, very nice. Yeah, cool, awesome. Thanks so much, Nick. Andres, thanks, Bruno. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. We'll see you next week. Cool. Ciao. Yes.